Today let's make a connection between uh, the Leibniz rule and the material derivative. Recall, in a previous video we derived this result in one dimension. Turns out in three dimensions, if we want to integrate some function over a volume and that volume of integration is changing with time, we have the same result. except now we have a surface integral instead of these two values at the left and the right side of the domain. We have f times some velocity dotted with the normal vector of the surface integrated around our arbitrary region. And this velocity here we interpret as the velocity of the surface. So we have a normal vector in and this surface could be moving. And whatever its velocity is at that particular instant in time is the velocity we use in our essentially three-dimensional or volume version of the Leibniz rule. Now let's take a special case where this volume has a particular physical meaning, which is now it's a material region or a fluid particle. So it's a chunk of fluid that we're going to follow as it moves throughout. And it's the same matter, and we're going to follow it as it moves through the flow. So now we're going to be taking this volume integral over a material region, so it's something a little bit more physical. Well, nothing changes in Leibniz rule. Other than when our volume of integration, which is changing with time, which is now a material region, that velocity becomes the velocity of the fluid. So uh, once we have this, we can convert this uh, surface integral to a volume integral using the divergence theorem. And then we can group everything together and get a nice simple result. which is the time rate of change is some function integrated over our material volume is equal to this thing right here. So the change with respect to time and the divergence of the function itself times the fluid velocity. So let's see how we can use this in a couple of uh, applications. So let's consider conservation of mass. So now I'm going to integrate the fluid's density over some material region, dV. So again, this will be a material region, my volume of integration. And I want to say, what's the time derivative of that? Well, since by definition our material region or fluid particle is nothing more than the same stuff that we're following through space, its mass is constant. So its time rate of change of this integral must be zero. So we can simply apply the theorem from the last page. And we convert, once we move this uh, derivative into the integral sign, we have the two terms, the field itself changing, the density, and this term, which represent, that comes from the fact that our material region can be changing with time. And again, since this was over in an arbitrary region, if we're integrating something and we get zero over an arbitrary region, the only solution can be that this thing itself, the thing in parentheses, must be zero. And the thing in parentheses is our pointwise equation for the conservation of mass. So let's apply the previous results to the following integral over a material region. So here I'm going to take rho times b, where b is just something per unit mass. So we'll find that we, a lot of our conservation laws, we might replace this to have, uh, we want to look at momentum or energy. And so we'll often have integrals where we have something on a per unit mass basis. So right now I'm just going to call it b, and we'll derive a result which we'll use extensively uh, in some of our later conservation laws. So let's just apply what we know so far. Now I can expand all of these terms out. So I've just expanded all those terms out. Now let me group a few things together. So now I've grouped my terms together, uh, denoted in color here. If I look at this equation inside the parentheses, this is zero by conservation of mass, so I can cross that out as a big old zero. And this term here is nothing more than the material derivative. So our result then 
is that the time rate of change of the density times something per unit mass integrated over the volume, if that's a material region, is nothing more than the following. We'll use this result extensively uh, in our later conservation laws.